Cassie, this video is for you. We are going to find the slope of the tangent line to the polar curve r equals to 1 over theta at the theta value pi. And this is how we shall do it. Whenever we are trying to find the slope of the tangent line to a polar curve, we should take a minute, write this as parametric. So let's do that right here. We know x is equal to r times cosine theta. And then we also have y equals to r times sine theta. In our case, the r is a function of theta, which is 1 over theta. So for the x equation, I'm going to write this as for r is 1 over theta. And then we multiply by cosine theta. And of course, we can write this down as cosine theta over theta. And we do the same. For the y equation, the r is 1 over theta. The sine theta is just being multiplied. And then we can write this as sine theta over theta. And the purpose of doing so is we can now find the slope of the tangent line to the parametric equation right here. The slope of the tangent line is we're trying to find dy dx. And then by looking at the parametric equation, we know to get dy dx, we first need dy d theta, and then we divide it by dx d theta. And let's just get to work. For the dy d theta, we're just going to look at the y equation and do the usual derivative. And then we will divide by the derivative of x with respect to theta. Let me put down the big fraction bar right here. And then let's look at the y equation and do the usual derivative. To take the derivative of this, as we can see, this is a quotient, so we need to use the quotient rule. Let's square the denominator first. So I put it down right here. And then the quotient rule says, I'm going to keep the bottom function, which is theta, and then we multiply by the derivative of the top, which is going to be cosine theta. And then we will subtract the top function, which is sine theta, times the derivative of the bottom, which is going to be 1, right? And then we are done. We do the same thing for the x equation. Right here, take the derivative of this, and then put it down right here. So let's square the denominator. So we get theta squared, and then we keep the bottom function, theta, times the derivative of cosine theta, which is going to be negative sine theta, and then we subtract, we keep the top function, which is cosine theta, and then we multiply by the derivative of the bottom, which is going to be 1. So this is the construction. All right, as we can see, this is pr pretty much like a complex fraction, and the numerator is divided by theta squared, so it's a denominator, right? What you can do is we can multiply top and bottom by theta squared. You see they cancel each other out nicely. And then we pretty much have this on the top. Then let me just put it down. We have theta times cosine theta minus sine theta times 1, which is just sine theta. And then for the denominator, this is theta times negative sine theta. So we have negative theta sine theta and then minus cosine theta, just like this. We're done. This is an expression that will get you dy dx, and this is in terms of theta. So let's look at what's the theta value. Theta is equal to pi. Therefore, we just have to plug in theta is equal to pi. And we can just do a computation, and everybody will be happy. <laughs> so let me just, um, you know, uh, I will write down everything for you guys. So I plug in pi in here, pi times cosine of pi, right? And then we minus sine of theta, which is pi, over negative theta is pi, and then we have the sine of pi, minus cosine of theta is once again pi. And now, this is pretty much the hardest part. What are these, right? So let's see. Cosine of pi is what? Cosine of pi is negative 1. 
sine of pi is 0. And likewise, this is going to give you 0, and this is going to give you negative 1. So on the top, okay, on the top, we pretty much just have pi times negative 1 minus 0, so just negative pi altogether, over this portion will be 0 minus negative 1, so we have the plus 1. So at the end, we have negative pi for the final answer. This is it, okay?